Hello everyone, welcome. So today we will be learning about the structural organization in animals. We all know that every animal body or as you say the plant body is made up of tissues. Okay, tissues are group of cells with specialized functions. They exhibit division of labor. Alright, because various tissues they come together, they perform a specific function. So first coming to animals. So what are the various kinds of animal tissue we have? We have epithelial tissue, we have connective tissue, we have muscular tissue and neural tissue. So once we come to the epithelial tissue, there are different kinds of epithelial tissue. So first if we look at the shapes of the epithelial tissue, they can be flat. They can be cube-like, they can be columnar, or they can be ciliated. So if you see they are flat, so you know the structures are something like this. So they are very flat in nature. One is cuboidal, so it is just like a cube. So you, we will have this and one is columnar. So they are in the forms of a column. Okay, and one is ciliated. So ciliated will have this cilias over them okay so these are the various types of tissues we have which can be squamous cuboidal columnar etc so squamous epithelium it is made up of single thin layer of flattened cells with irregular boundaries they are found in the walls of blood vessels and air sacs of lungs and are involved in functions like forming a diffusion boundary then we have the cuboidal epithelium which is a single layer of cube like cells they are commonly found in the ducts of the glands tubular parts of the nephrons in the kidneys and its main function are secretion and absorption then we have the columnar epithelium which is very thin slender cells they, they are nuclei are located at the base free surface may have microvilli they are found in the lining of the stomach the intestine and the and help in secretion and absorption then we have those which bear cilia they are ciliated epithelium their function is basically the locomotion move particles or mucus in a specific direction so that we can find in the bronchioles fallopian tube etc some of the columnar or cuboidal cells they get specialized for secretion which is known as glandular epithelium so they are mainly of two types unicellular consisting of isolated glandular cells and multicellular which is consisting of cluster of cells on the basis of the mode of pouring of their secretions glands are divided into two categories exocrine and endocrine exocrine means which secrete the mucus saliva etc the digestive things and which are released through the ducts or the tubes whereas endocrine their products are called hormones and they are secreted directly into the fluid bathing the glands then we have compound epithelium which is made of more than one layer of uh, cells and thus have limited role in secretion and absorption their main function is to provide protection against chemicals and mechanical stresses they cover the dry surface of the skin the most to the moist surface of the buccal cavity pharynx etc all cells in the epithelium they are held together with intercellular material so here there are three types of cell junctions which can be found so these cell junctions that is there in the epithelium or other tissues they are called as tight tight adhering and gap functions so we have tight junctions which helps to stop substances from leaking across the tissue adhering okay that is coming together adhering junctions which perform cementing to keep the neighboring cells together and gap junctions which facilitate the cells to communicate with each other by connecting the cytoplasm of adjoining cells for rapid transfer of ions next we have connective tissue connective tissue if we say what are the various connective tissues we have blood lymph etc 
connective tissues are most abundant and widely distributed in the body of a complex animals so because the function is basically linking supporting other organs tissues and that is why they are known as connective so there are um, they range from soft connective tissues to specialized types which include cartilage bone adipose or blood so in all connective tissues except blood the cell secrete fibers of structural proteins called collagen or elastin so fibers will provide strength elasticity and flexibility to the tissues so here the, uh, these cells also secrete modified polysaccharides which accumulate between the cells and the fibers and act as a matrix connective tissues are classified into three types loose connective tissue dense connective tissue and specialized connective tissue loose connective tissue is what loose connective tissues are cells and fibers which are loosely arranged inside a semi uh, fluid uh, ground substance for example adhera tissue present beneath the skin often it contains fibroblast then we have adipose tissue which is a type of loose connective tissue which is located mainly beneath the skin so they are specialized to store fats okay then we have fibrous and fibroblast they are compactly packed in the dense connective tissue the orientation of the fibers shows regular and irregular pattern and called dense regular and dense irregular respectively in the dense regular connective tissue the collagen are present in rows between the many parallel bundles of fibers tendons which attach skeletal muscles to bones and ligaments which attach uh, uh, which attach one bone to another are examples of tissues so dense irregular ones are that has fibroblasts and many fibers that are oriented differently then we have the cartilage bones and blood that are the various types of specialized connective tissue so we saw there are loose connective tissue we have dense regular or dense irregular and then we have specialized connective tissue the intercellular material of cartilage is solid pliable and resist compression cells of this tissue are enclosed in small cavity within the matrix secreted by them most of the cartilage in the vertebrate embryos are replaced by bones in the adults now bones they are basically hard and non pliable ground substances which is rich in calcium and collagen which give the bone its strength the main function is to give the structure to the body which is the framework and bones support and protect softer tissues and various internal organs which is there the bone cells which is the osteocytes they are present in the spaces called lacunae the limb bones such as um, the long bones of the leg serve weight bearing functions they also interact with the skeletal muscles attached to them then we have blood which is a connective tissue which contains plasma which is rbc white blood cells and platelets okay then coming around to the muscle tissue so in the muscle tissue so each muscle is made up of many long cylindrical fibers arranged parallel to each other so these fibers they are composed of numerous fibrils which is known as microfibrils okay now this muscle fibers they contract and uh, you know relax so contraction will help in the movement of contraction relaxation is helping the movement of the particular muscle so their actions move the body to adjust changes with the environment so there are various kinds of muscles we have skeletal muscles smooth muscles and cardiac muscles so skeletal muscles are like the tissues is closely attached to the skeletal bones in uh, a typical muscle such as biceps striated or stripped or skeletal muscles fibers are bundled together in a parallel fashion a sheath though connective the connective tissue enclosed several bundles of muscle fibers in smooth muscle fibers what happens they do not show any kind of striations and the cell junctions hold them together and they bundled together in a connective tissue so that is basically in the walls of internal organs blood vessels so these are 
causing the involuntary actions and whereas in the cardiac muscle fibers in is a contractile tissue which is present only in the heart cell junctions fuse the plasma membranes of the cardiac muscles and make them stick together communication junctions at some fusion points allow the cells to contract as a unit next we have the neural tissue so the neural tissue so, so in the uh, for then we have the neural tissue in the neural tissue what is happening so it is a nerve uh, tissue that we are talking about when a neuron is suitably stimulated and electric disturbances is generated which swiftly travels along its plasma membrane arrival of disturbances at the neuron endings or output zone triggers the events that cause stim stimulation or inhibition of adjust neurons now we are coming to the various so these tissues are going to form the organs and this these organs are going to form the this group of organs are going to form the organ system so let us look at one by one the organisms so first looking to earthworm so earthworm it is reddish brown terrestrial invertebrate that inhabits the upper layer of the moist soil during the daytime they will burrow made by boring and swallowing the soil in the gardens they are they are traced by their fecal deposits known as worm castings the common indian earthworm are ferritima and lumbricus now coming to the morphology of the earthworm if you see this if uh, coming to the morphology of the earthworm you will form we will see that earthworm is has cylindrical body and this body is divided into many segments short short segments 100 to 120 now the dorsal surface of the body is marked by dark median mid dorsal lines so there are lines that will be marking them along the longitudinal axis and the ventral the lower surface the ventral surface is distinguished by the presence of the genital opening or which is the pore okay now anterior end front anterior consists of mouth and the uh, prostodium whereas if it uh, we if we uh, the prostodium is sensory in function the first body segment is the breast, uh, peristomium which consists of mouth the mature worm segments 14 to 16 are covered by prominent dark band of glandular tissue called clitellum so there is a dark band within 14 to 16 which is known as the clitellum so here and here is the so the mouth portion you see with the prostomium now four pairs of spermatical apertures are situated on the ventrolateral sides of the intersegmental groups of fifth and ninth okay so we have the genital apertures over here okay um, and the 18 the numerous minute pores with the which is the nephridopores, pores open at the surface of the body in each body segment except first or the last and the clitellum there are rows of a shaped setae so there are various setae which is available which is a shaped setae okay next coming to the anatomy Yes. coming to the anatomy so the body walls of the earthworm is covered externally by a thin non-cellular cuticle below which is the epidermis two muscle layers circular and longitudinal and an in an almost colo, uh, columnic uh, epithelium the epithelium is made up of single layer of columnar epithelium which contains the secretory gland the elementary canal is a straight tube and runs between first and the last segment of the body so here a terminal mouth opens into the buccal cavity of one to three segments 
and they which leads to the musculopharynx and narrow tube between fifth to seventh segment okay it helps in the in the grinding of the soil and all those and the stomach is from ninth to fourteenth segment here and um, the body of the earthworm is decaying leaves and the food of the earthworm is decaying leaves and organic matter mixed with the soil calciferous glands which is present in the stomach neutralize the humic acid present in the humus intestine starts from the 15th portion the intestine will start and a pair of um, short and conical intestine uh, that is which will projecting from the intestine on the 26th segment the characteristic feature of the intestine after 26 except the last 23rd 20 to 25th segment is the presence of the internal median fold of the dorsal wall which is known as typhlosol okay so there is the typhlosol which is there and now the elementary canal opens and to the exterior of the body a uh, small round through the anus and the indigested organic which soil passes through the digestive tract where the digestive enzymes break down complex food into smaller absorbable unit these simpler molecules they are absorbed by the intestine intestinal membranes and then they are utilized so fermentin exhibit a close type of vascular system consisting of blood vessels capillaries and heart due to a close circular system blood is confined to the heart and the blood vessels contractions keep blood circulating in one direction smaller blood vessels supply the gut nerve cord and body was blood glands are present on fourth fifth and sixth segment they produce blood cells and hemoglobin which is dissolved in the blood plasma so blood cells are phagocytic in nature earthworms lack specialized breathing devices respiratory exchanges occurs through moist body surface into the bloodstream now coming to the excretory organs which occur as segmentally um, arranged coiled tubules called nephridia there are three types septal nephridia present on both the sides of the inter uh, intersegmental septa of uh, segment 15 to the last that opens into the intestine then integumentary nephridia which is attached to the lining of the body wall segments 3 to last that opens the body surface and then pharyngeal nephridia which is present in three paired ducts in fourth fifth and sixth segment these different types of nephridia are basically similar in structure nephridia regulates the volume and composition of the body fluids a nephridia starts out as funnel that collects excess fluid from a cholemic chamber the funnel connects with the tubular part of nephridia which delivers the waste through the pore to the surface of the body one into the digestive tube then the nervous system is basically represented by the ganglia arranged segment wise on the ventral paired nerve cord the nerve cords is in the interior region bifurcates laterally encircling the pharynx and joins the cerebral ganglia dorsally to form the nerve ring the cerebral ganglia along with other nerves in the ring integrate sensory input as well as command muscular responses of the body next coming to the sensory system which does not uh, does not have eyes but does possess light and touch sensitivity organs to distinguish between light intensities and to feel the vibrations at the ground worms have specialized chemoreceptors which react to chemical stimuli these sense organs are located on the interior part of the worm earthworm is hermaphrodite which is bisexual that is testes and ovaries are present in the same individual there are two pairs of testes present in 10th and 11th segment and their vasa differentia run to the 18th segment where they join with the prosthetic gland two pairs of accessory glands are present one 
appear each in 17th and the 19th segment. The common prostate and the semi uh, spermatic duct, that is vasa differentia, opens to the exterior by a pair of male genital pores on the ventrolateral side of the 18th segment. Four pairs of spermatheria are located in the 6th and the 9th segment. They receive and store spermatozoa during copulation. One pair of ovaries is attached at the inner segmental septum of the 12th and the 13th segment. Ovarian fanal are present beneath the ovaries which con continue into the ovidect, join together and open on the ventral side as a single median female genital pore on the 14th segment. A mutual exchange of sperms occurs between two worms during mating. A worm has to find another who they mate juxtaposing opposite gonadal openings exchanging packets of sperms called spermatophores. Mature sperms and egg cells and nutritive fluids are deposited in the cocoons produced by the gland cells of Clitellum. Fertilization and development occurs within the cocoons which are deposited in the soil. The ova are fertilized by the sperm cells within the cocoon which then slips off the worm and is deposited in or on the soil. The cocoon will hold the worm embryo about 3 to four, three weeks. Each embryo will produce 2 or 20 born worms with an average of 4. Development of earthworm is direct that is there is no larval stage. Earthworms are known as friends of farmers because they make burrows in the soil and make it porous which helps in respiration and penetration of the developing plant roots. The process of increasing fertility of the soil by the earthworm is called vermicomposting. They are also used as bait in the game fishing. Next coming to cockroach. So in cockroach what do we see? They are brown, they are black or black bodied animal and they belong to arthropoda. Bright yellow, red, green colored cockroaches have also been reported. So then let's come to the morphology. So if we talk about cockroach, you see it is Periplaneta americana, which is about 34 to 53 millimeter long. So, the body of the cockroach is segmented and it is visible into three distinct regions head, thorax, and abdomen. The entire body is covered by hard, chitinaceous exoskeleton, and in each segment, exoskeleton has hardened plate, which is called sclerites that are joined to each other by thin flexible articulate membranes head is triangular in shape and which is lying anteriorly at the right angles to the longitudinal body axis it is formed by the fusion of six segments and shows great mobility in all directions due to flexible neck the head capsule bears a pair of compound eyes, the pair of thread like antenna arise from the membranous sockets lying in the front of the eyes. Antenna have sensory receptors and help in monitoring the environment. Anterior end of the head bears appendages forming biting and chewing type of mouth parts. The mouth parts consist of labrum that is upper lips, a pair of mandibles and a pair of maxillae and a labium. The median flexible lobe acting as tongue which is the hypopharynx lies within the cavity enclosed by the mouth parts. Thorax consists of three parts which is prothorax, mutothorax and metathorax. The head is connected with the thorax by a short extension of prothorax known as neck. Each thoracic segment bears a pair of walking legs. The first pair of wings arise from mesothorax and the second pair of uh, wings will arise from the metathorax. Four wings which is called the tegmina and are opaque, dark and leathery 
and cover the hind wings uh, hind wings when at rest the hind wings are transparent membranous and are used in flight the abdomen in the ma- in both males and females which consists of 10 segments in females the seventh st- sternum is boat shaped and together with the eighth and the ninth sternum forms a brood and of or genital pouch whose anterior part contains female gonophore and sperma- uh, spermatical pores and collateral glands in males the genital pouch or chambers lies at the hind end of the abdomen bounded dorsally by ninth and the tenth terga and ventrally by the ninth sternum it consists it contains dorsal anus ventral male genital pore and gonophysis male bears a pair of short thread like anal styles which are absent in females in both sexes 10 segment bears a pair of jointed filamentous structure called as anal erect okay now coming to the anatomy so the elementary canal presence in the body cavity is divided into three regions that we uh, know f- foregut midgut and hindgut the mouth will open into a tubular pharynx leading to the narrow tubular passage through the esophagus then it will go into a sac like structure which is called crop which is used for storing the food the crop is swallowed by gizzard or proventricles it is an outer layer of thick circular muscles and thick inner cuticle forming six highly chitinous plate called teeth gizzards help in grinding of the food particles the entire foregut is lined by the cuticle a ring of 6 to 8 blind tubules called hepatic or gastric cassia is present at the junction of the foregut and the midgut which secrete digestive juice at the junction of the midgut and the hindgut is present another ring which is 100 to 150 yellow colored thin filamentous which is malphigian tubules they will help for removal of the excretory products from the hemolymph the hindgut is broader that than midgut and is differentiated into ileum coelum and rectum the rectum opens out through the anus now coming to the blood vascular system of the uh, cockroach it is poorly developed and it's opened into the space which is hemocoil hemocoil the visceral organs located in the hemocoil are bathed in blood the hemolymph is composed of colorless plasma and hemocytes heart of cockroach which consists of elongated muscular tube tube lying along the mid dorsal line of the thorax and the abdomen it is differentiated into funnel chambers which is ostia on either side that you see here bloods from sinuses enter the heart through ostia and is pumped anteriorly to the sinuses again the respiratory system here it consists of 10 pairs of small holes which are called spiracles thin branching tubules which carry oxygen from ear to all parts of body the opening of the spiracles is regulated by sphincters exchange of gases takes place at the tracheas by diffusion excretion is performed by malphigian tubules each tubule is lined by glandular and ciliated cells they absorb nitrogenous wastes product and convert them into uric acids which is excreted out through hindguts therefore the insect is called uro cotylic in addition the fat body nephrocytes and uricose glands also help in excretion the nervous system in the cockroach if we talk about it consists of series of few segmental arranged ganglia which is there and three ganglia lie in the thorax six in the abdomen the nervous system of cockroach is spread throughout the body and it and its head holds a bit of the nervous system while the rest is situated in the ventral the belly side okay the lower region now so um, now you understand that if the head of the cockroach is cut 
it will still live for as long as one week in the head region the brain is represented by supra esophageal ganglion which supplies nerves to the antenna and the compound eyes in cockroach the sense organs are antenna eyes maxillary palps labial palps anal circuit and etc so each eye has 2000 hexagon ometidia and this will help to receive several images of an object this kinds of vision is known as mosaic vision so that is more sensitive but less resolution cockroaches are dioecious that is both sexes have well developed reproductive organs male reproductive system consists a pair of testes one line on each lateral side in the fourth and the sixth foot to sixth abdominal segment for each testis arise a thin vas deferens and which uh, opens into the ejaculatory duct through the seminal vesicle the ejaculatory ducts will open into the male gonadophore gonophore situated in the ventricle of the anus a characteristic mushroom shaped gland is present in the 6th and the 7th okay uh, here if you see it is present in the 6th and the 7th abdominal segment which functions by the male gonophysis or palomere the sperm are uh, stored in the seminal vesicles and are glued together in the in form of bundles called spermatophore which are discharged during copulation the female reproductive system which consists of large ovaries lying laterally in the second and the sixth abdominal segments each ovary is formed of a group of eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles containing a chain of developing ova oviducts of each ovary unite into a single median oviduct which opens in the genital chamber a pair of spermatica is present in the sixth segment which opens in the genital chamber sperms are transferred through the spermatophore their fertilized eggs are encased in capsule called a thicke and uthike uh, is dark reddish to blackish brown capsule about 3 to 8 inches they are dropped drooped or glued to suitable surface usually in a crack or surface of high relative humidity near the foot surface on the average females bring 9 to 10 uthika each containing 14 to 16 eggs the development of p americana is pyrometabolous meaning the development is nymphal stage the names look like adults the names grows as mounting about 13 times to reach the adult okay many species of cockroach are wild and are of Oh, no no economic importance a few species thrive in and uh, around human habitat so they are basically the pest and they transmit diseases next coming to frogs <coughs> frogs we know they are amphibians they can live both in water and in land so the scientific na- name is rana tigriana tigrina okay so rana tigrina is the and so they have a constant body temperature the body temperature varies with the temperature in the environment okay so they are basically the cold blooded or or the poikilotherms so now coming to the morphology of a frog we see the frog it has got a head and a trunk uh, a neck and a tail tail is absent above the mouth a pair of nostrils is present eyes are bulged out and is covering by the nictitating membranes that protects them while in water on the other side eyes a membranous um, tympanum ear which receives sound signals the fore limbs and hind limbs help them in swimming walking leaping and burrowing the hind limbs end 
in five digits and they have larger and muscular than the four limbs which ends in four digits okay now feet have webbed that helps them for swimming and frogs exhibit sexual dimorphism male frogs can be distinguished by the presence of the sound producing vocal sex also a copulatory pad on the first digit on uh, of the fore limb which are present in the female frog which are absent in the female frog now coming to the anatomy the body cavity of the frogs accommodate different organ systems such as digestive circulatory and all the now the digestive system which has a elementary canal the digestive glands the elementary canal is short because the frogs are carnivores and hence the length of the intestine is reduced the mouth opens into the buccal cavity that leads to the esophagus through pharynx so it's very similar to that of humans and the esophagus is a short lived a short tube uh, that opens into the stomach which turns which in turn continues as an intestine rectum and finally opens into the cloaca and liver secretes bile just like in humans and pancreas also secretes the pancreatic juices food is captured by bilobed tongue which they have and digestion or by the action of hcl in the gastric juices so partially digested food called chyme is passed into the stomach then uh, through the small intestine then the duodenum while well, the duodenum receives the bile gall bladder and pancreatic juices from the this one and bile emulsifies so very similar to that in the human that occurs over here and frogs respire by two different methods in water skin as an aquatic respiratory organ dissolve oxygen in the water is exchanged through the skin by diffusion on the land okay on the land we have it as um, the they have got lungs so they will uh, respire by, via their lungs okay so uh here the air enters through the nostrils into the buccal cavity then into the lungs the vascular system of frog is well developed closed type frogs have a lymphatic system also the blood vascular system involves heart blood vessels and blood the lymphatic system consists of lymph lymph channels and lymph nodes heart is muscular as it which is upper part of the body cavity it's three chamber there is two artery and one ventricle which is covered by a membrane called as pericardium the triangular structure called sinus venous joins the right artery the it receives blood through the major veins which is called vena cava the ventricles open into the sac like conus arteries on the ventral side of the heart the blood forms the heart is called uh, is carried to all the parts of the body so the arteries just as a human beings okay and then we have special nervous and uh, special venous connections between the liver uh, okay there is special um, uh, venous connection those veins which are being connected um, at the uh, are very close to the a uh, liver okay and the veins will which will collect a uh, blood uh, from the different part of the body to the heart forms a venous system the special venous connecting the liver and the intestine as well as kidney and lower parts of the body are present in the frogs then uh, there is a hepatic portal system which later forms a renal portal system the blood is composed of the plasma and the cells so we have rbcs wbcs leukocytes and they are and the blood is going to carry in the nutrient gases water water etc elimination is uh, elimination nitrogen waste is carried out by the well developed excretory system the excretory system consists of a pair of kidney ureters cloaca and urinary bladder so here again there is an excretory system which consists of kidneys and each kidney which is com- consists of the urinary tubules or the nephrons so the two ut- uh, ureters emerge from the kidney in male frogs the ureters the ureters acts as ure- uh, urinogenital uh, duct which opens in the trachea in females what happen the ureters and ovi duct open separately in cloaca 
the thin walled urinary bladder is present in the ventral to the rectum uh, to the rectum which opens in the groin so the frog excretes urea thus it is urotelic animal okay now coming to the control and coordination what happens the chemicals coordinations is happening which is achieved by the hormones so here also uh, they have got various glands like pituitary thyroid parathyroid thymus and all those things then here uh, there are various nervous system they have got two kinds of nervous system central nervous system and peripheral nervous system the 10 pairs of cranial nerves arising from the brain and brain is enclosed in a bony structure called as brain box the brain is divided into forebrain midbrain and hindbrain the forebrain is olfactory and all the sensory organs which is there midbrain for is characterized by optic lobes and hindbrain is for the balance of the body okay now frog has a uh, different types of sense organs neighbor for touch we have for taste smell vision hearing so out of this eyes and the internal ears are well organized eyes in the frog are a pair of spherical structures situated in the orbit in the skull okay frogs are have well organized male and female reproductive system male a reproductive system uh, consist of a pair of yellowish ovoid testes which are found adhered in the upper part of the kidneys by the double fold of the uh, peritoneum called mesor mesorium uh, vasa differentia are 10 to 12 in number and then finally it communicates with the urogenital tract that comes out of the kidneys and open into the cloaca cloaca is small medium chamber that is used to pass the fecal matters in female reproductive system what happen there are ovaries which are situated near the kidneys and there is no functional connection with the kidney the pair a pair of oviduct arising from the ovaries opens to the cloaca separately and a mature female can lay around 2500 to 3000 ova at a time fertilization is external we know there is a development of larval stage which is a tadpole and from the tadpole this metamorphosis takes on to form the adult frogs are beneficial for the mankind because they eat insects and protects the crop frogs maintain ecological balance because they serve as important links of food chain and food webs in the ecosystem in some countries the muscular legs of the frog can be used as food so that's it thank you